Hey there, future college students. My name is Kevin Landry, and I am the co owner of the Extra Point ACT Prep Company. Now, my question for you today is this Are you getting the improvement that you need on the ACT? just by watching the ACT tips and strategy videos. Now, as ACT prep professionals for the last 10 years, we know that ACT tips and strategies are very important. You do need to have pacing strategies and test strategies and things of that nature. But if you wanna get the really big jumps, the three and four and five points improvement, you really have to know your ACT skills. Now before we get too far into what ACT math skills that you need for the test, do me a quick favor and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you'll be up to date on more videos like these. We're going to be doing a whole series of playlists on all of the most common ACT math questions that you can see on the test and you don't want to miss any of those particular videos that will be coming out in the near future. Okay, so the purpose of this video and video series is to actually provide you with the ACT math skills that you need to make those big jumps on the ACT math test. Now for these videos, I've picked out the most common ACT math skills that are tested, and then I've gone into those skills, and I've picked out the most common ACT questions that come from those ACT math skills. Now before you watch the rest of this video, what I really would like you to do is I'd like you to go into the description of this video and there's a document there that I use for the remainder of the video. It's got a handful of math questions on it. I'd like you to stop the video, give yourself about five minutes to work those math questions, and then come back and play the remainder of this video and see how you did. Not only will I give you the answers, I will also show you some very good strategies to work these ACT math questions. So not only are you going to get to learn all of the ACT math skills, I will show you some strategies that go along with it as well. Good luck and I'll see you at the end of the video. When you finish, I'll give you some more information on some good ACT math prep that you can also use along with these videos. All right, let's just jump in here and start taking a look at our next section of pre-algebra questions on the ACT math. We're going to focus on percentages here. Percent questions show up pretty regularly on the ACT math. You can probably get close to four questions per test, maybe only one or two questions, but the whole point is percents show up quite a bit. They can be embedded skills, so you could be working Algebra 1, Algebra 2 type problems and have some sort of percent involved with it. Now, the other thing about percents in the ACT math is they have a wide variety of questions that they could ask you. And so what I've tried to do in these five questions is actually pick the biggest variety that, that I could and staying consistent with ones that show up pretty regularly. Now, if we look at this first question, one of the reasons I picked this question is because it looks extremely involved. It's a very large word problem. There's a lot of information going on here. And a lot of students get intimidated when they look at this question. Now, what a lot of students are shocked to find out whenever I show them this question is, this was actually question like three or four on the ACT math. So if, if you roll across a question like this very early on in the ACT, keep in mind that the question is probably going to be very simple. So you shouldn't need to worry about how difficult it is. You just need to figure out what it is that they're trying to get out of you. So let's take a quick look at this. The oxygen saturation level of a river is found by dividing the amount of dissolved oxygen the river water currently has per liter by, so let's take a look at this. We're going to take, we're going to divide the amount of the dissolved oxygen in the river by the dissolved oxygen pass capacity per liter of water. So those are the two values that we're dividing here. And then we're going to convert them to a percentage. So that first statement just tells you how to do this particular operation. So it says, if the river currently has 7.3 milligrams of dissolved oxygen per liter of water, and the dissolved oxygen capacity is 9.8 milliliters per water. What is the oxygen saturation level? So basically all they're really asking us to do is, is divide these two things. And so we're going to divide 7.3 by 9.8. Now, once we go ahead and set this ratio up, we can see that we want to convert it to a percentage. So the way we would do that is just simply do the division. And let's go ahead and get a decimal. 
And if you recall, you take that decimal and you multiply it times 100 to convert it to a percentage. And so we're going to say roughly 74%. And the reason we cut it off at 74% is because we can look at our answer choices and see that we don't need to take the decimal out any further. And in doing so, answer choice D corresponds to our 74%. So this problem, if you look at the actual word problem, it looks very involved and very complex. But if you look at the math, you can see that the math is very straightforward. So now, if there were some problem like this and it was question number 47 as opposed to question number 7, I might be a little bit more cautious and thinking that there's more work to do. But being that it is given very early on in the test, I should not be too intimidated by this and just look for the simple math that's involved. And it's just a straightforward percentage problem. This next problem is very much a straight translation problem. So you should know how to translate English to math in all of these word problems. And when you do that, then you can make these problems very easy. If you struggle with that, that is going to be a problem in getting these answers correct. So take a little time to practice this. But it says 115%. Well, I need to convert that back to a decimal. So 115% is 1.15. It says of a number. Anytime we do that, we're going to make that our variable. Is means equals and then 460. Now, notice that this problem is broken up into two different parts. So we've got this first part that we need to solve for x. And so when we solve for x, we get x equals to 400. So what we're saying is 115% of a number. Well, that number is 400. Now, the second part of this, it says, what is 75% of the number? Well, the number was 400, and to get 75% of that, we are simply going to take that number of 400 and multiply it times 0.75, which is going to give us a value of 300. That gives us answer choice B. Now, I want you to pay attention. They tried to bait you in with that 400 by giving it to you as an answer choice. And a lot of students would end up getting a value of 400 and then saying, oh, there's an answer choice of 400. That must be the correct answer. But they will use steps in your problem as bait answers. So just make sure that you understand what it is that you're looking for in any given problem. Okay, in this next problem, we have a very classic percentage problem where we have either a sale or a discount or a markup or taxes or a combination of all of that. So make sure you're comfortable with these types of problems. It says a calculator has a regular price of $59.95 before taxes. It goes on sale at 20% below the regular price. Before taxes are added, what is the sales price of the calculator? So we have before taxes and before taxes. So basically, taxes is thrown in there as kind of redirect. We don't Taxes is not even important in this problem. And there's really, if we just scratched out the word before taxes, it would not change this problem at all. So just kind of keep that in mind. So we can do this in one of two ways. I'm going to show you the kind of the textbook method, and then I'm going to show you the little bit of the shortcut method. So we need to know what 20% off is of the $59.95 to start. So we're going to take the $59.95, and we're going to multiply it times 20%. And, of course, I have to convert that to a decimal, which gives me $11.99. Now, what that tells me is that the 20% discount is going to equate to $11.99. However, we need to subtract that from the original amount that we're going to pay for the calculator. So we're going to say $59.95 minus 11.99, which gives us a price of $47.96. And if we look at our answer choices, that is going to be answer choice D over here. Now, notice that that was a two-step process. We can actually shortcut that process a little bit. And the way that we can do this, if you understand percentages, you know that you are paying basically 80% of this entire value. So you could say 59.95 times 1 minus 0.2, which is the same thing as saying 59.95 times 0.8. So you are actually paying 
80% of the full price. Either way that you do this, you're going to end up with the same answer choice. So you can do this in one step or you can take two steps to do it, but either way you should come up with the same answer. Now this is a very popular percentage problem not only in textbooks but on the ACT as well. On this next problem they give us a table and you'll see in the later parts of this playlist we actually do a little video on tables and graphs and basically data representation on the ACT math test. So this could kind of fall in either one of those categories but since the end question asks us what percentage we're going to take this as a pre-algebra percentage question, but it does require some table reading skills. It says the table below shows the class level of the 500 students at Greenville High School. So we have the freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, how many there are in each class. Now it says what percentage of students at Greenville High School are seniors? And so this is a very, very straightforward percentage problem. And while some of you may be looking at this and you're like, this is way too easy. Yes, it is. It's way too easy. So don't ever miss it on the ACT math. So a lot of students can't believe that this easy of a question would show up on the ACT math. But they're really not trying to give you all hard math. They're trying to find out where you fall on the spectrum of your math knowledge going from easier material to harder material. So if they just tested you on harder material, some people would not get any questions right on the ACT, and that's not what they're trying to, that's not their objective. They're trying to let the colleges that you're applying to know this is the level of math that they absolutely do know. So this question, we would just simply take the number of seniors, which is 120 seniors, and we would divide it by the total number of students which is going to give us a decimal of 0.24 and of course to convert that to a percentage we would want to multiply that by 100 to give us 24 percent which is answer choice C. So yes this is a very easy question so do not miss it. Okay this last question we have some very important terms in here and you got to pay attention to what the question is asking us so we need to kind of break this down now the math on this particular problem is not difficult but we need to make sure we're setting it up correctly it says the hillside high school band has 50 members seven of who, seven of whom are drummers exactly four of these drummers played the piano exactly 12 band members play the piano what percent of the band members play the piano and are not drummers? So that word not is really, really important. So we only want piano players who are not drummers. It says 12 band members played the piano. Four of the drummers play the piano. So we know that out of these 12 piano players, four of them are drummers. So we've got to eliminate those if we want to find just the percentage of players that are piano only and not drummers. Now that's going to give us a value of eight piano players who are not drummers and we need to figure out what percentage that is of the total. And since we have 50 members we can simply divide that and multiply by a hundred which would give us a total of 16% and that will be answer choice D. So we gave you a good variety of percentage problems that could show up on the ACT math there. Be sure to keep practicing as many questions as you can. Watch the rest of this playlist and we'll have plenty more videos to help you get prepared for the ACT. Okay, now that you finished those problems, I hope they didn't give you too much trouble and you learned a few strategies to go along with them. So these are some of the ACT math pre-algebra skills that you're going to need for the ACT math test. Now these are generally the easier questions and you should get these 100% correct. Now there's 10 other videos that go along with ACT pre-algebra. So if you check in the description below, I've provided a little link to each of those videos. Also, if you go to the YouTube, our YouTube channel, you'll see the playlist. We'll have a playlist of the pre-algebra videos as well. And coming up a little bit later, we will also do playlists for the ACT math sections for Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, Coordinate Geometry, Plane Geometry, and Trig. So basically keep an eye out for those. Um, always check back to our YouTube channel to see if they are up and they will have playlists for those. Now, as far as ACT prep is concerned, we do have a very good ACT prep course that we provide online. 
So for a very cheap price, you can get a very, very good prep course. Many of our students go up four, five, six points. So we look forward to seeing you in the future. Hopefully you'll take our course. If not, just keep watching our videos. That'll get you a long way to improving your ACT score. Thank you for helping us out. Share these videos with a friend. Tell as many of your friends as you can about them. Uh, we appreciate your support on our YouTube channel. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell for future notifications. Thank you.